school performances over the next two weeks. So we have a built-in audience of over 5,000 kids that are going to see the show. So we'd like to uh, thank our sponsors who made this program possible, the City of Flagstaff and Flagstaff Cultural Partners, the Greater Flagstaff Forest Partnership, Ponderosa Fire Advisory Council, and Coconino County, uh, Arizona Emergency Management. Coconino County, Arizona Emergency Management. I promise you I practice that. Uh, without their generosity, we simply wouldn't be here. So can we give them a light of applause? The team behind this, like, I just look at this tree and over 5,000 kids are going to see this tree. Wait till he wakes up. It's awesome. Um, and uh, I, I was thinking about, like, Peter Jackson and Lord of the Rings, you know, it's just your success as a director is the team that you gather behind you. And this team has been remarkable. Uh, Brent Durham up there in the corner has videotaped uh, the whole project since it really began in October. Uh, he's been there videotaping rehearsals, idea sharing, uh, the whole thing. So thank you, Brent. Uh, the script was written by the fabulous Advanced Creative Writing class. What you're going to see, you'll see the actors do, um, I see the imaginations of 16 writers come to life when I see this show. It's awesome. Props and costumes. My gosh. Where's Emma? Oh, there she is. She's going to be shy. <laughs> Emma Gardner uh, was our artist in residence for this project, and she designed and constructed many of these props and costumes. And they are just phenomenal, Emma. So thank you. Um, she, along with Gary Dunn, designed and began the carpentry of our trees. The masks for fire and water were created in Sarah Buss's art classes. Uh, followed art students under the direction of Janice Tennis and our artist and resident, Emma Gardner, uh, put countless hours of work into all these props and costumes and trees. The tree murals that you'll see this evening were designed by Gwen Waring, Shanta Begay, and Sean Scavlin. Uh, Follow art and theater students, interpreted those, and painted what you'll see tonight. And uh, Introduction to Theater is going to be performing. We have three casts, nine actors each, that will be hitting the road next week. Uh, and it's just been a great process. And, uh, and Montek. This would not even be here if she didn't email me in July and say, Mike, do you want to do this? And I said, of course, yes, because I know it's not in my artistic vocabulary. And uh, this has been one of the most exhilarating, terrifying, and powerful projects I have taken on during my tenure at Follow. So thank you, Anne, from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> I hope you all enjoy the uh, wild ride that is the Yellow Belly Ponderosa play. Oh, really? Okay, yes. Emily, you've been in front of the TV all morning. It's time to turn it off. But mom, I battled through the wind and the fire, and I overtook the castle with the trees, and I'm about to come face to face with the gnome, mom. The gnome. Emily, where do we live? On Meadow Drive, Flagstaff, Arizona, United States, North America, planet Earth, Milky Way Galaxy. And on this Meadow Drive, Flagstaff, Arizona, United States, right out your door lies the Coconino National Forest. Everything you have just played in your video game is right outside. But the graphics are better here, Mom. And I can't fly or hang out with gnomes. You need to play outside. But I don't wanna. Please, just let me finish this one world. Please, please, please. That's it, young lady. Emily, I've been waiting a while, long time to give this to you. You got me a present? I'm guessing it's not Super Vortex Rally. I've been saving up my whole allowance for that game. Oh, it's much better than that. It's a kite! A kite? What am I supposed to do with a kite? <laughs> Uncle Jack gave me this kite many years ago. And when he handed me, he said, Karen, this kite is very special. You must be very wise to use it carefully. So Uncle Jack was as cuckoo bananas back then as he is now? Emily, he wasn't lying. This kite contains magic. What kind? You'll just have to see for yourself. But I don't want to go outside. I don't want to fly a kite. Emily, 
This kite has been waiting for you for many years. But if it really is magical, how come you never use it? It was meant for you. Well, if it's not magical, will you buy me Super Vortex Rally? All right, I promise. Really? Really. Now, you must be careful of it, and for your own sake, go fly a kite. Well, <laughs> <laughs> kite, what do we do now? You sure don't look magical. But it looks like I'm going to get Super Vortex Rally out of it. So you might as well not be magical. <laughs> Yum! 
You smell like vanilla. <laughs> I think you smell like butterscotch. Now I'm hungry for an ice cream sundae. Let's, Let's not daydreaming. You should have always allowed time for daydreaming, children. Now, Max, how far did you get in your super secret mission before you were so pleasantly distracted? Well, I was on my way to the super secret place that you told me about. I already passed super secret rock with a super secret bush behind it, and I was on my way to super secret boulders, but I couldn't find the bird's nest. So that's when I doubled back and met Emily. She flew a kite in my head. It was an accident. Can you see my kite from way up there? If it's that dark netting satin, oh, no. then <laughs> is lost. <laughs> now, would you like to join Max on his super secret mission? I don't know. What's the mission? It will take you to the forest. You will come to know everything that surrounds you. It will be magical. <laughs> That's what my mom said about the kite, and look where that got me. Indeed. Look where that got you. Oh, it was fun. It will be fun and an adventure. Oh, okay. Your journey begins there, at the line of the tree. Let's go. See you soon, Major. Good luck, Max and Emily. I'll be here <coughs> waiting. Of course you will. <laughs> Sizes, what else? Helpful in some ways, dangerous in others. 